Hi, I'm Mike, and this is an intro. Alright, what we got here is Colgun, the Storm's Fury, I think I said his name right. Five drop, three colorless, so black and a red. He's a flying legendary dragon out of Dragon's... Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, this is the earlier printing. He's out of Fate Reforged, the middle block from, well, the Tonkir set. So let's see. Whenever a dragon you control attacks, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero until end of turn. That's a good ability. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong, it, it's actually quite great. Gotta readjust the camera. Not sure what happened there. But it's kind of... Well, there's the other dragon from the exact same block, an earlier printing of one of the dragon lords, or became dragon lords. Uh, he basically does this, but in reverse. Instead of buffing your allies, you reduce your enemies by how many dragons are attacking. Minus one, minus one counters. And that guy's a board wipe. And he's great against tokens. This guy is a board increase. And it's not defense either, so it's strictly attack power. It's similar to, um, what's the mechanic? Battlecry for Mirrodin. And I, I did like Battlecry, and this is a much better version of it. But it's... He's kind of... Red and black up here, those aren't the colors I would really choose for a Swarm token deck. Now, they're doable and they're very good, but other than the one Hellkite that pumps out tokens based on uh, how many drags are attacking, and those dragons, or well, the tokens are also dragon tokens and it goes exponential, you don't really need Colgan with that. That's a win strategy on its own. You just keep attacking and then you just eventually swarm. What Colgan really gets good at, though, is two things. One, his colors enable him to work with Bladewing, so you can dash him out, and if he dies, Bladewing comes in and you just re-res him. Or res him, not re-res, but, uh, yeah. And, you know, together, these are two buffs, so if you have the mana, you can actually do a lot of damage quickly. But on their own, you either have to have a lot of dragons in red, because there's only a couple in black. Actually, I only know one in black to start with. Or, technically, two, because they're much... Uh, yeah. I try not to uh, think of the poisoning dragon, though. It doesn't exist. <clears throat> not at all. No. Not at all. Scytherix is not a thing. But, but other than that, these are the two dragons I would mainly focus on in this set. And they're both good. But... This guy relies on tokens. Having a lot of tokens. And using them. Gotta readjust the camera. But other than the one card that does it, you don't really need him to make it good. Which is where Conspiracy comes in. This card is... It's insane. It basically breaks any kind of tribal deck. It creates a tribal deck where there wasn't one. And it's not hard to, you know, put down. It's only a three drop. or Sorry, a uh, five drop. Three colorless, two black. As Conspiracy comes into play, choose a creature type. Creature cards you own that aren't in play, creature spells you control, and creatures you control are the chosen type. That pretty much covers everything. If it's being cast, if it's already out, or if it's anywhere else, including Exile, if you can interact with that somehow, they now become whatever you want. Colgan works with dragons. With this out, you get a free pass for everything. Just gonna rearrange this. And that just gives him so many more options. Now, Anyone who knows how Colgan works will immediately take out Conspiracy, so you don't have a lot of time with it. If you drop it, you need to have the mana to immediately use it. Now, the one upside to his colors are black and red have a lot of mana acceleration, and if you include artifacts, that won't be hard. But you're going to want to have a lot of search spells, and with black, that shouldn't be too bad, but you're going to want them in there. You're going to want a lot of mana. Again, black will make that easier because it's a color that ramps well. Same with red to a lesser extent. But what you're going to want to do is get Colgan out. Either drop him in for his normal cost, or dash him in if you want him to attack that turn. Personally, I would get him in the turn earlier and then just hold off. Because the second you drop Conspiracy, you're going to want to attack that turn. But you're going to want to do something with it. Now, either build up an army ahead of time, or build it up on the spot. Ahead of time, I would actually recommend Infernal Genesis. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. He or she then puts X11 black minion creature tokens into play, where X is that uh, card's converted mana cost. Now, this is a 6-drop. It's a really old thing. I think this is from Prophecy, 
but I'll be honest, I don't know too much about the really early sets. I'm sure someone will clarify that for me, uh, or could someone clarify that? Clarify that for me, please. Yeah, thanks. I just like this one because you're going to have a lot of cards and you're going to mill yourself. But this is a black deck. You're going to have ways to get them back. I would be honestly surprised if someone didn't include them. But this way, you're going to get a solid minion in production every turn. Now, your opponents will as well. So I would recommend putting in a few things just to, you know, take it down. Do a little damage to them. Maybe buff yourself in the process. Overall, though, that's not as important because you're going to be focusing on just building up your own army and maybe doing something to swing the tides in your favor. But this is a long-term build strategy with this guy. For a quick one-up, maybe get that out faster, put out a bunch of random creatures just to block yourself and keep yourself safe, and then Chancellor of the Forge. It will double whatever you get. Now everyone but him will have haste. He's still big, which is nice, but he produces an exponential amount of tokens, red goblins. But as long as Conspiracy is out, they then become dragons. Because you, you would be insane not to pick dragons. One sec, just gotta readjust. What ends up happening is you attack with an instant swarm of dragons. And say you have maybe 12 cards out to start with. You suddenly have 24. 23 of those cards, because Chancellor is not possible to attack, he doesn't have haste. Slight problem with that card, actually. Probably would be better with it. But, um, you're suddenly going to have a large swarm, and they're going to be buffed for every dragon attacking. You don't need much to win at that point. If two creatures hit, chances are you're going to kill someone. So even if they have a lot of little blockers, if you so much as, you know, give anyone flying, or lifelink, or unblockable, or any of the little things, or uh, mass fear, I'm pretty sure there's black cards that do that. There are so many things you can do, and you will probably be able to finish the game right then and there. But, you only get to really build up to that once. Conspiracy, the first time someone plays against it, they might let you get it. The second time, they will know better and they will hold something to stop it. Be prepared. But this is how this guy works, and he will be an overwhelming beat stick. The fact that he has dash is actually okay if you have any of the other enchantments out of uh, Dragons of Tonkir, the last set in the uh, Tonkir block, because there's things to say whenever a dragon enters, it does damage based on the number of dragons. And there's a few other things, but that suddenly becomes really potent because with Conspiracy, everything's a dragon. So if your first rush doesn't win, that really goes off. Or if you're not at a place where you have everything set up for a rush win, this is a slow buildup. But we'll do a really nice buildup because you'll get a lot of tokens out of Infernal Genesis. So you'll get a lot of them for whatever you mill. This makes them dragon, and the one enchantment that does what I said that I can't seem to find a copy of for some reason, will make it a win condition. That one's a little harder just because people will focus on you, because you will be the threat. Otherwise, this is a bum rush deck. Colgan is insane. That said, outside of this, he's kinda limited, because it really doesn't matter. He doesn't do so much in the deck. This is how he interacts with it. But short of that, you can really go with anyone in these colors and it work the same. But this is how you make him good. So I guess, uh, as far as how good he is in his own right, if you build to his strengths, he's very terrifying. But that's only if you build to his strengths. He isn't very versatile. If you see him, you kind of know what you're going to get. Unless someone is doing something crazy where he's just there for show, and the deck does something completely independent of the general. I've seen it happen before. I don't personally like those types of decks, but... I like building around generals, personally. So yeah, overall, you kind of know what you get with this guy. He's not very versatile. He's not very fast, because the dash cost is the same cost as his regular one. But in a pinch, he will deliver victory if you can hit. And so just keep a few things in mind when you do that. And that shouldn't be too hard, because black has a lot of little tricky things like that. But yeah, I'm Mike. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, and if there's any other cards you'd like me to look at, give me a heads up. I'd be you know, happy to look at them. Later.